So we're looking at AC alternating current and capacitors. First thing we want to do is make a comparison between uh, AC and DC. Here's a DC circuit. So we might have 12 volts DC. You can tell it's DC by the power supply. And we've got a uh, capacitor in series with a light bulb. Um, in this situation, the light bulb would briefly light up, but then it would stop because as the current uh, can no longer flow because the capacitor has a, a gap, an actual physical gap, stopping the current from flowing. In an alternating current circuit, um, you have, could be 12 volts, could be whatever, but it's alternating current. Same, exact same setup, the capacitor in series with the lamp. And this time, um, because the current is going back and forth, the capacitor is continually charging up and discharging and charging up in the other direction, the light bulb glows and it stays on. Okay, um, now it's really important to understand the reason why this uh, stays on. The um, lamp stays on because current continually flows. In fact, if we're being really precise, we'll say current continually flows through the lamp. Okay, so the capacitor uh, is like a bucket of positive and a bucket of negative, and as the current flows, it's continually filling up and unfilling each of those buckets. So that allows a continual current going back and forward through the lamp to light it up. Whereas in the DC, you fill the buckets, and that's it. No more current flows. There's nothing flowing, the buckets are full. So that's why you can maintain current flow through the lamp, making it light up. All right. Um, now, interestingly enough, in an AC circuit, so we're not dealing with this anymore, we're dealing with uh, the AC circuit, if you measure the voltage across the capacitor compared to the current, that's RMS current in the circuit, you will get a nice straight line. It's meant to be a straight line. And similar to Ohm's law, V equals I times R, where R gives you the gradient of, uh, for this is for voltage and current in DC across a resistor, um, the gradient gives uh, a, a, a quantity which is measured in ohms, because it's the same voltage over current, R equals V over I, um, but we call it uh, the, remember this is for a capacitor, we call it the reactance of a capacitor, and we give it the symbol X with subscript C to show it's the reactance of a capacitor. You can get reactance for other things. Now, what this means, this term reactance, and especially with the symbol ohms, is that it has some impedance, impedance or ants, impedance, that seems more right, um, that impedance which impedes the current or, or affects how much current flows in the circuit. Uh, if, if you have a, a greater reactance, less current will flow for the same voltage. So you have less current um, for the same voltage, uh, with the same voltage at that point there and there. Um, and you can have more current for the same voltage if you have a lower reactance. Okay. So um, this, this idea of impedance, a resistance is a type of impedance which impedes the flow of electricity, the flow of electrons, and reactance is also. Um, the reason why it's called a react, reactance rather than a resistance is because it's reacting to um, the, the changing alternating current. Um, and that's where we get into the factors of reactance. We've already looked at DC comparison and the reactance and Ohm's law. Uh, actually, one further thing to say is you can rewrite um, Ohm's law um, for reactants, Vc equals I in the circuit, which is RMS again, times Xc, since the units are the same. So that that gives you the formula. But anyway, as we were saying, the factors that affect reactants, we've said um, the alternating current uh, affects it. If you increase the frequency, there will be less impedance. It's like filling up those buckets um, over and over again you don't have to give them as much time to fill right up uh, because it, they fill a little bit and then change before it's managed to fill up enough. 
Um, so that means if you increase the frequency, you decrease. That's an inverse proportional relationship. Um, and it also makes sense that if you um, if you uh, increase the size of the capacitor and make the buckets bigger, so that you can fit more charge inside them, then um, which is increasing the capacitance, then that's going to make it uh, easier for the current to keep flowing as well. So, so the reactance, the impedance to current flow, is also inversely proportional to the capacitance. Okay, um, and if we combine those. Um, with a proportionality constant, turns out the proportionality constant is 1 over 2 pi, um, which is very interesting. So we get this, we get this expression here, equals 1 over 2 pi Fc. So that's a really important formula. And again, so increase the capacitance or increase the frequency, and you decrease the reactance, and the opposite is true. And um, interestingly as well, this 2 pi section 2 pi f, that's the angular frequency. Ah, there we go, that pops up again. That was in your AC part um, uh, previous video. Uh, so, we've looked at um, the DC comparison. You can see that current flows continually in an AC circuit with a capacitor. Uh, we've looked at this concept of reactance, which is like resistance, but um, it's more dependent on other factors, the frequency and the capacitance, instead of um, physical properties, um, physical material properties of the amount and the type of material and all, all that. Anyway, you could write this out in a bit more fuller detail, taking your capacitance formula, um, epsilon naught, epsilon r area over um, the distance of separation as well. Um, and you would see that I guess the reactance is dependent on the area, the dielectric strength, and the distance, of, which is all the capacitance in any case. More than enough info there for your introduction to capacitors and AC. Thank you.